So you're getting ready to do a water system in your house. I'm not a pro, but I built one and it's pretty good. You might want to pay attention because you'll probably learn something. And I have a little experiment going over here. Basically water samples I'm going to take. And after, I guess you could skip to the end if you want to, see if you're interested or not. But basically, I'd stay tuned. There's a lot to go over, but it's not professional, so it's going to be kind of hodgepodge jumping around. I've already done some of this, so I'm going kind of backwards to the intro now. So kind of bear with me. It's not a pro thing, but I guarantee you're going to learn something. So you want to do a whole house water filter. We've done one for a few years now. And uh, I can give you a couple of pointers, kind of been there, done that, reworked this a few times, and basically this is a pretty good design. I wanted to show you what we've got going on here, and everybody can kind of tinker with it and get it to go the way they want. Um, basically, we did this because in our area we've got kind of a cancer problem that is higher than what it should be, and nobody really knows what is going on. We're in kind of northern central California where... Yeah, there's a lot of agriculture and pesticides and herbicides and a bunch of junk I'm not going to bore you guys with, but uh, didn't know if maybe that had something to do with uh, Austin and his ADD, ADHD, or anybody else. We've got a history of cancer, which I'm not going to get into all that, but hey, it seemed like a prudent thing to just go through it, test the water, and there's a lot of junk in here, but long story short, um, if you want to design a system, we started out with a Pelican system which is what these things are when we got it it was way back when these two actually came in like these weird plastic things and you know they, they had film and then they started falling apart so anyways it's the original tanks we got this when before the uh guy who started the company sold out and now it's owned by somebody else and it's kind of ran by a bunch of bean counters and i think customer service fell off the cliff last time i talked to them it was kind of worthless and uh the media that they use to fill up these things now i ordered a refill from them it was complete garbage and i just you know sent it back and didn't pay them for it and just shipped it back to them and said it was junk it was filled with these big old things the size of marbles and it, it was it was just cheap fill and it had peat rocks in it and all kinds of stuff so pelican has kind of turned into junk and this salt free thing salt free softener uh, stay tuned and I will show you how that works out on our nice plumbing fixtures and everything so next time around I'll probably fill this thing up with media, but I'll show you what uh, I've got some toilets that uh, they say you know salt freeze you just wipe off the calcium stains and nobody gets any hot water deposits and anything else so Yeah, that, that, that doesn't work and uh, <laughs> We kept the first stuff and then I added to it. So there's actually twice as much i played around with this trying to get something to work out of there, so I'm kind of disappointed on the salt conditioning thing. But uh, what does work out really well are these filters up here on the top. And I would encourage anybody to spend a little bit more and get the see-through ones, so that way you're not constantly taking it apart, looking it up, trying to figure out what, you are, what you've got going here uh, by, by dismantling the blue filter, so you always have to constantly look at it. This way you can just come by take a glance, look at it, and see exactly what you've got going on, whether you need to service them or not. And uh, I'm going to kind of change up what we're doing. These have only been in here for about a year or so, and I change them normally uh, every year, maybe two. I'm going to do a little bit differently on this time around. We started out with three, and I added a third one because I put in this iron removal thing, but I think that's a little bit unnecessary, and that filter's gotten really expensive. So what, what I have going now is we're on city water, and... This is a 5 micron in here the front, which leads to a 1 micron absolute. This is an iron removal filter, and then after that is a 0.35 micron. And you can see how they get progressively darker as they catch more stuff. This one is the first one in line, so it gets hammered. So what we're going to do is I want to protect the 1 micron absolute. This is kind of the heart of the sediment filters. You have to have one of these. Don't get a nominal, get an absolute. It makes a difference. But I'm going to redo these. I wanted to show what they looked like while they were dirty. And then I'm going to replace them while they're clean. This is plumbed in. I did all this. This is a one inch PVC line. It all, this whole system flows with one inch so we don't have any drop in pressure. The slower the water moves, the better it filters. So if you can get away with a one inch and get a big 20 inch filter like this housing, go for it. They get really heavy. So what I did, I got a strip of aluminum, drilled some holes in it, and I used it as a brace all the way along the front. 
to help support some of that weight because they are heavy once they get filled up with water. So whatever you build, build it strong and you'll be in good shape. And uh, people are probably going to argue with me over this, but in these fittings, I've been through this, PVC is no good. I even got the really heavy schedule, I don't know, 80 or whatever those things are, broke them. Because when you get the expansion, the construction, the summer, the winter, I don't know what the deal is, but don't skimp on this. Buy brass. Brass. I don't care if they cost $10 a pipe here. Get brass uh, fittings and, and pipes and put them in there. Otherwise, you're going to be forever chasing headaches. So trust me on that. I've had to pull this apart a few times. It's worth that. Stick a union in here so you can service that thing if you have to. But anyways, I'm going to redo this with a 20 micron in the front, 5 micron here, pull both of those out, they're going to be washable, and then after that it's going to be a 1 micron absolute, and then the same thing here that's already here is a .35, just to kind of clean up whatever's left in the water. But these do such a good job, these sediment filters, I swear to God, I mean these things are nice, the carbon or whatever, but you'd be amazed at the junk that comes out of this water. And we're on city water, I don't know if I've said that already. But my God, the crap that comes out of this water, I was amazed. That thing turns, you know, cigarette brown after a month. I just, I'm amazed uh, how much stuff is in this water. It just, ugh. Anybody drinking out of the water, I feel sorry for them. Anybody I've ever brought over to my house looks at this thing and they go, whoa. <laughs> That's definitely a water system. But then they're amazed by how much junk is in here. Because they think they're drinking clean water. I mean, it's better on your showers, your faucets, your dishwasher, your washing machine, your coffee maker. Clothes come out better. Your skin's softer. Your hair feels better. I mean, everything. All the way down the line is way better for you. When I did this, um, we had some health concerns, so it wasn't just a budget endeavor. But when I did this, I did it all myself, and I bought all these things myself. When I bought the Pelican thing, honest to God, Pelican today, I would buy it for the tanks. The media's junk. Um, it, it's it's just a, a blend of three or four things. I think they've cheapened up on it considerably. When I first got it from Ron, the guy who owned the company, talked to him. He seemed like an okay guy. He was a salesman, no doubt, but yeah, at least he stood behind his stuff, and he, it was a coconut media, you know, the best you can get, and they were small little uh, particles, so it all boils down to surface area. The bigger the particles, the less the ability to filter. He did have good stuff. I'll give him that because I opened it up and I looked at it. And then afterwards, after it goes through this whole system, it basically goes through all those that I went through. Then it comes around, goes into the tank, and I don't know, I kind of fell for this magnet thing and went back and forth. And finally, I just got tired of doing the research and I just did it, you know, <laughs> what the hell, it's not going to hurt anything, right? And I've actually pulled this apart to see if I trap any iron in there, and it, it has not. So, anyways, uh, then it goes into this salt free softener thing. Don't get me started. Next time around, I'm just going to fill it up with media. I'll show you a, a, a gray toilet that we have later on, and you can see how well this thing works. And this has been in service for about a decade before we ever even got the toilet in a whirlpool tub, and I'll show you what they look like. Yeah, but after that, and then it goes into this, which is a post filter, which this basically is nothing more than the fines that are coming out of that tank. The water is already clear, but that just catches the fines before they go back into the house. And then, I don't know if you can see this in the back there, but that is a Trojan UV light that I've got hooked up to. So when the water is absolutely crystal clear, just before it goes back into the house, I've even got a uh, ultraviolet light on it. And uh, the one thing, oh, and I uh, put a little tap here where I could actually fill up like a five gallon water bottle of some water if I wanted to, to go camping or something. Hardly ever used it. Service port down here. And I put two off valves because sometimes they go bad and while I was doing it I put two in here. But here is the thing that you have to have. My advice to anybody that does this is install a bypass. I can flip those three valves all horizontally. It bypasses the softener entrance here and it basically just creates a loop and runs right back down inside the house so you can work on this and still have water in your house. It's not going to be filtered, but you know people can still take a shower. You can wash clothes in case something blows up or breaks. Like I was mentioning, those fittings when they crack uh, from the plastic ones, I had to turn off the water and tear it all apart, and it took a couple days. And sometimes you have to order parts, so it really sucks being without water. You know, get the bypass, just do it that way. Basically, it's very simple. 
it goes up. If I want to bypass it, we turn this, which forces the water that way. It goes over here, you open up that valve, and then this is the return. You close that, and it goes into the bridge, and then runs back down inside the house. Basically, you just force it to go up, over, and then back down inside. It's very simple, but if you don't have one of those, it's a mess. So, the other thing is, uh, these filters, you don't want to be opening them and closing them and opening them and closing them because the way they, they work is they actually cut into the top of this. So that's what's great about the clear ones is you tighten them down one time, you can visually inspect them and pull them out and you can rinse anything that's five microns and up. So <clears throat> these are Flowmax filters, which are pretty decent quality. Um, these, I've had them for a long time. I'm going to use those up on the next transition and I bought some more to replace everything in here. And uh, you know, that's it. But you don't want to be taking these apart and tightening them back down together because each time you do it, you kind of damage that filter a little bit. So my plan is that these two are probably never even going to be opened. They're just going to ride. These two, I'm going to pull them out, service them, wash them or whatever, and those are going to be the ones that take the damage. So, um, all in all, when we put the system together, um, it was maybe about, I don't know, $2,500 or something like that. And if you like this, and if anybody actually ever watches this thing and uh, they they are interested, I even have an under-the-counter that after all of this, it goes through into reverse osmosis for drinking water. You could probably drink any of this water after it goes through this, but just for the sake of, uh, you know, uh, peace of mind, I have a pretty good system under-the-counter that, that uses about a six- or seven-stage filter after this. And... Uh, it really cleans up the water because all the sediments already filtered down so I don't have to waste anything I can go straight into using specialized filters without having to do a large sediment filter so I uh, don't know if anybody wants me to get into that or not um, but I think this is something that everybody should look into in their area in California I don't know about the rest of the country but we're switching over to sewer water yay so everybody gets redistributed sewer water, which was one of the reasons why I went through this. And I have relatives in L.A. They are already drinking sewer water that gets repurposed and sent back to them. In our area, we're not there yet, but because of the drought and stuff in California, we're probably heading there rapidly. So that's why all this is in place, and that was one of the reasons why I sprung for that UV thing. Is Normally I wouldn't do that, but as soon as they said sewage, I was kind of like, ew, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to have to do that. We're not going to put a well in our backyard, but at least I can make sure it's uh, it's clean water at the very least, or sanitary as I can make it. But my advice to everybody is if you can't do all of this, which everybody's got their own budgets, and you know if you have the spare money, great. If you don't, you got to put food on the table, I understand. But what I would advise anybody to do is if you can't even get into the charcoal, at least get two of these. 20-inch filters, a couple hundred dollars, you can set this up. Get like a 5 or a 20 micron and get this 1 micron absolute two of these on your water main you at least get the junk out of the water um, after that you can just do something else at a countertop but this at least gets the junk out of the water and your clothes will be cleaner and everything your shower won't clog up your faucets won't clog up I think if anything this has helped the hard water situation we have by getting the clay and the dirt and the sand and the crap out of the water so Anyways, I'll change the filters and I'll show you what these things look like in a little bit here, guys. Well, I'm in the middle of changing our filters now. And as you can see, now I'm in bypass. So as I'm working on this, basically the house has water, um, which, uh, like I said before, uh, everybody should do. And I just thought maybe I'd give you a quick rundown of how these filters work. But before I get into that, I want to think of two things that are important to mention here. I said before we're on city water, but just so you understand, the one beauty of being on city water is it has chlorine in it. We're on chlorine, not chloramine over here. If you have chloramine, you know, same it, same principle here, but it's a lot nastier. Um, but anyways, as these filter, the sediment filters, a lot of people say, oh, you're going to get bacteria and you're going to get things growing in here and other problems, and I'm not a water specialist, but... One thing is the chlorine is a dissolved gas. It stays in all of this water as it goes through here. So the one beauty of being on city water is the filters are constantly being disinfected as the water goes through here. So as it's getting the gunk out, 
you don't need to pull them down and bleach them or do anything weird like that because they are being disinfected as long as you do the sediment first before you get into the charcoal. So all the sediment's taken out and it's still being disinfected. And then we go over here to the charcoal filter, which one tip for this, when you first get this thing, don't hook it up to your house plumbing and fire it up. Take this thing in the backyard and then make an adapter if you can't find something and you rig this thing up with a garden hose or something and you slowly fill it up the first day so water runs out of it and then you let that sit. It kind of like soaks into the media and it makes it sink because when it gets wet, the stuff is lighter than water. It all floats up and it, and it hits the top of this thing and it chokes down the flow. So you can even kind of go backwards with this thing. Go up, then go down, reverse it. You can keep flushing it back and forth a little bit. But let it sit, let it soak for like a week, you know, if you have to in your backyard, you know, two days at least, and you slowly just kind of fill it and then maybe back flush it. But the amount of black crap that gets pushed out of this thing will destroy your house. They don't tell you this, but I'm telling you this. If you order this from Pelican or anybody else, hook that damn thing up in your backyard and just flush it, you know. Once you get it wet, still go out there every day and you'll be getting black crap out of that thing that's like charcoal dye. I mean, everything. It'll destroy everything in your house. Your dishwasher will go to crap. Your washing machine will go to crap. Your toilets, bathtub, everything. Luckily, I was smart enough to get a tip on that, so I never did it. But you hear horror stories from people. It destroys their house because some lazy-ass salesman from, you know, Pelican or some other company doesn't tell you that because they don't give a shit about you. They just want you to buy your $2,000 thing and hit the road. And, uh, but... That is one of the things you have to do. Put that thing out, flush it. If you have a plumber, have them drop the damn thing off and you flush it before you ever install it in your house. Because if they lie to you and they say, oh no, it's never been a problem, you're gonna trash every single appliance in your house that uses water. It's gonna be crap. And it may or may not work itself clear. You might have to tear everything apart, clearing off mini filters, so big headache. I mean, that thing was spewing black stuff out of here, full blast on a garden hose for like a week. I ran it until it came clear. Get a glass, fill it up. If you still have junk floating in it like this, this thing was after I flushed it. And I'm still getting fines in here for like a year. So I changed this media about a year ago. And now I'm going to change that filter and see if it even makes a difference. So maybe I'll do another episode on that. But city water, you don't have to worry about disinfecting. And make sure you flush your media very well before you put it in your house. My two big tips. See you after I get the filters done. And this is what it looks like when you pull the filters out. These came out pretty well, but you can see where the uh, the housing kind of cuts into here. That's how they're designed to work. You can really see it on this one. This has a this is probably the best setup out of everybody. I think this was a Pentec filter or something. I'm not plugging for them, but this one actually has a removable washer with a recess, so you don't break the filter if you uh, over tighten it. Which I'm always paranoid of leaks, so I think I'm guilty of always over tightening these things. But this is what happens when you over tighten them is that filter is just going to split. The video is probably not going to show this, but that's about an eighth of an inch up higher than the rest of the housing, so that's how those things work, is they just compress down. And you can see the fabric, how it kind of buckles right here with that little wave. And this one does it too, and that one kind of shows you. I guess when you get to that point, you're right there, which I have a really hard time with stopping when it gets to that point. But one other thing, uh, Heads up to anybody else. When you first get these things, they don't have much. So you need to get a package of something like this, which is basically, it's a food grade silicone grease. And I know most people are smart enough. I'm not saying this brand is the greatest. This is what Amazon had or whatever when I ordered it. But uh, I don't have any Amazon links here, so I'm telling you guys the truth. I've learned a lot from YouTube. Uh, I've learned how to do sheet rocking and gardening and everything else. So this might be one of those things where maybe I've got a little edge up to come back and pay back the sheet rocking guy when he's getting ready to put a water system in his house. But this is just to pass along knowledge, basically. But I know somebody out there is a cheap bastard. <laughs> They're going to go to Home Depot and buy a tube of silicone thinking it's the same thing, which that's a silicone adhesive. This is a silicone grease. Totally different. It's all squishy in this package. But you have to pull these out, lube around here. Sorry about the mess in the garage. You know, typical garage here. You pull those out, just rub it around a pair of gloves or maybe your fingers. You're not supposed to get bacteria on there, but, you know, who knows. If you're in city water like I am, it probably doesn't matter much. But uh, lube those up really well, put them in, and you're good to go. 
Well, I know this is going to be a video of one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, so, um, <laughs> but uh, it's okay, I'm not a professional, but I am trying to help you guys out. The other thing I just thought about as I do this, I'm kind of like, oh yeah, we should probably mention that. Um, when you go to put your filters back in, um, these guys, when they're new, and you have to get the silicone, you have to grease all this up, pull it out, and you just use your hands and wash them really well first. I guess you could wear rubber gloves. I don't because you make a hell of a mess, which leads us to the next thing. <clears throat> have to get these all greased up and ready to go. Get some cheap bleach. I guess you could use Clorox or whatever. But basically what you want to do is pour a little bit of water down in there first. Basically, you don't want to put too much because then the filter starts floating and it's a pain. But there's a little... Uh, kind of like a nipple, I guess, where the filter sits in. Fill it up just shy of that, and then get like maybe a Dixie cup, like that, about a shot glass, so, of uh, some kind of bleach, and just fill that up and throw that in here. So what happens is these filters have bacteria, your hands have bacteria in them, and like I said, I'm gonna have chlorine flowing through most of these, but the very last one is after the carbon, and if you have bacteria in the water, then you run the chance of getting bacteria colony going inside your carbon. So every time I get a filter uh, replacement, I just throw splash a little bit of bleach in there. When I fill them up, I have a bypass, so I just fill them up and I let the water just kind of soak in there with bleach for maybe half an hour or something like that. Basically, that's what hospitals do. It, uh, it just decontaminates the lines, like the UV light. Every time you're supposed to service that, you're supposed to bleach the lines if you're going for totally sterile. I don't take it that far. But uh, every time I do handle something, I try and throw a little bit of bleach in there um, just to disinfect things. And I wouldn't normally fire this up otherwise, but since I already have the camera going and I'm getting ready to put these in, these are the filters I've got. The uh, original type I were using were Flo Flomax, and uh, they worked really well. I was totally happy with them. The tops kind of rotted out a little bit. But you can't get those anymore. They're being discontinued or went out of business or something. I don't know. So these two I had laying around. So now I'm trying this Neo Pure thing, which I'm not really too crazy about it. I mean, uh, the pleats are like all screwy because I think when they put them in, they squish them down and, and you know, things. So you get this crap where, I don't know, maybe they'll loosen up once they get water on them or something. But these are much better constructed if you can get flow max <laughs> i don't know what the performance is but sitting here looking at them as a hardware guy or whatever this one's built like a tank compared to this thing it's just you know i don't know it's kind of just seems like a coffee filter with plastic ends screwed on it and i mean i'm kind of kind of disappointed here but it's not how it looks it's how it works so i don't know we'll see if all my filters wind up getting dirty then i know they're not doing their damn job so the first two should get dirty quickly. The other one should hang in there. If they all get dirty, or if it gets to this first, and then it gets dirty, then I know, because this one is a one micron absolute. I had a couple of these. This is a good filter. It's the best. If you can find a one micron absolute Flomax, they are good. They are really good. I wish I bought more, because now I can't find them. So anyways, there's my two cents. Magical jump cut. Okay, I've got the filters tightened up and I just did by hand uh, so far and I was about to put the wrench on it and I just thought I would show whoever watches this. Try and find something better than Neo Pure. This isn't even tight. I'm still at the point where I mean I was grabbing it with both hands and twisting it and this filter is crap. I mean, I don't know if this is coming through on the video or not, but the pleats are just all clogged up together. Yeah, it's not gonna work very well. But they're just, I don't know. I have to do something here because I need water, so. But uh, I sure as hell won't be getting NeoPure next time when I change these. But this is the Flomex. See how even and nice those pleats are? Look at that on the bottom. It's perfect. And this one over here, okay, it, it squishes a little bit. I guess you have to do that. But this one even has a nylon mesh reinforcement. Here's the other NeoPure down here. It's all twisted and mangled and at least that one's spaced out though or it might filter this one's gonna filter like a turd it's got these great big giant grooves I can stick my thumb in there I don't know that's the uh, 50 micron that's a complete piece of crap so I don't know if I can help somebody probably best to uh, spend another 10 bucks and get a pen tech or something like that and 
you know, if you can find a flow max, consider yourself lucky. Um, for some odd reason, this one down here didn't do too bad. This is the uh, their one micron absolute. They probably spent a little bit more on that because that's an important filter. So that one actually didn't do too bad, but the uh, the 50 there is a complete piece of crap. So, anyways, stick around. I'm going to uh, grab my wrench, tighten these down about a quarter of a turn past two-handed snug, just enough to compress that O-ring up there, and I'll be flipping the water on. Okay, bet you wonder why you're looking at plants all of a sudden in the middle of a water video, right? Well, just thought we'd give you a jump start on our next video. These were uh, <laughs> something we brought back from our little trip to Puerto Rico. I'm not going to admit to anything, but somehow these mango plants found their way in our suitcases and you know they just kind of happen to start growing here. And then we have our avocado project here. We got six or seven different kinds of avocados we're trying to get going in an area where they're not supposed to grow. So kind of throw these in the garage on the winter time on some of those really cold weeks. But here are the filters. And I bet you guys want to see how much crap comes out of those things. So, before I throw them away, to give you an idea of the contrast with the white towel, this is the order that they came out of. And it's really just not showing up well, but there's normally all kinds of nasty brown shit that comes off of these things. But anyway, that's what they started out life as. That's where they are now. I hosed them down, but there really wasn't a whole lot of junk that came off of these things because actually I had them out a week before, surfaced them, rinsed off the bulk of them. But yeah, if you get a rinsable one, you'll see what I'm talking about. And this is a Pentex uh, iron removing filter. Uh, just in case you didn't know, these are very light. They only weigh about a pound or so a piece. This sucker, ugh. That thing's got to be every bit of 20 pounds. It's like it has lead shot in it. So <laughs> don't buy that unless you beef up your filter housing. Otherwise, you're going to break something is my advice. Okay, on to the next jump cut. Well, welcome and magically teleported to the front yard here. Because now I forgot we have one more filter to change in this thing. And this is a hot water filter. So any clues where this one goes? I know we have too many filters around here. But... This one comes out of the hot water heater before it heads into the house. And last time I checked that, didn't have a whole lot of gunk because the other sediment filters are doing their jobs. But if I change one, may as well change them all. So let me show you what we get out of that guy. Oh yeah, and more magnets. I have no idea if those do anything or not, but they were cheap. I bought like a package of three or four of those things for like, I don't know, 50 bucks. <laughs> so in Russia, that's a big thing. Here. Who the hell knows? But for 50, 60 bucks, I'm not gonna sit around and debate about it. Just grab them, throw them on. Can't hurt anything, right? Okay, so once we change this guy, I'll show you what the dirty one looks like. Well, guess what? Our hot water heater filter definitely got some junk. New filter, old filter. And when I touch this, this is water still hot. When I touch this, I can feel this sandy, gritty, you know that white crap you get when you uh, change your hot water filter? It's right here. There's some of this. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but the thing is steaming. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's right out of the hot water heater. It's kind of a little uncomfortable to hang on to at this point. But, yeah, everybody that says that nothing comes out of those things, they got some nasty crap in there. So, that's the used one. That's the nice, shiny new one. I guess when they get wet, they get a little bit darker anyways, but just out of curiosity, let's see what's in there. that gunk out of there but you can still see the steam coming off <laughs> and this is rated for hot water so uh, atlas filter this has been on for a few years 
I've only changed this filter once or twice. I bought a big old package of these things. Aqua Boon, uh, one micron. Somewhere around here it says rated for hot. I don't know where I saw that. I don't know, maybe it's in here somewhere. Anyways, it's rated for heat. So, well, I've got you. Oh yeah, that's some pretty nasty stuff that's in there. So, that would be going in your shower, that would be going in your hot water tank, and you'd be brushing your teeth with it. Granted, it's not that much, we could probably pass it, but what the hell, I threw filters everywhere else in this house, what's one more, right? <laughs> like I said, we could sell our water here, it's so clean. Okay, bye, until the next jump cut. Okay, well, thought I'd invite you along for the fire up of the system after we change the filters here. And uh, I already got started and I kind of changed my mind. But basically you undo your bypass, open up a couple of faucets inside the house, kitchen, bathroom, two or three, so you can let the pressure escape out of the lines and you don't, you know, basically try and force air out, which then you get a, you know, pinhole leak somewhere, which is never a fun thing. Dealt with that too. So, um... Oh, that's my automatic light kicking on. Okay, my handy cam has a pretty cool light built into it. I love this thing. Um, but basically, make sure you're in bypass mode so you're not pushing bleach into your uh, carbon, which is this one, or the salt thing here. And uh, make sure you have you know one or maybe two of these guys as spares. They come in pretty handy. Those are your filters. And I don't know if I went in over this or not, but basically, anybody who's new to this, quick 101, when you drain your system, you have to have something like that where you can basically put a faucet, open it up, put a bucket underneath, and once you shut off the water, you push on this button and it lets air into the system, and then you know you can drain down all your filters. And these up here have it, even though I reinforced it with this aluminum bar because I didn't feel like messing around. And promise you, do not skimp on the brass. You will regret it. Tearing this thing apart is never any fun. But anyways, enough of that. Let's have some fun here and see what we get. So open it up slow. Let the water start coming in. Like I said, the uh, carbon is bypassed, so basically we're just trying to get some of that bleach water going in those lines and then I'm going to shut it off. take bets on how long these things will stay nice and snow pure. Yeah, I know this isn't perfect and this guy in the front is going to push the bleach that way, but oh well. You know, not a whole lot I can do about that. Yeah, I mean... The main purpose of this is for the one on the end here anyways. This is the one that's after the carbon. So this was basically just to disinfect after handling the filters, the filters themselves, using my hands to put the silicone grease on. Um, not going to anything crazy, it's going to eat seals here. Just about a Dixie Cups worth diluted down into each filter housing. And you just kind of let that run for a few more seconds until you quit here on those bubbles, maybe. And that's about good for right now anymore. I'm going to take the chance on uh, flushing out all my bleach. So, the only other thing that you can do is write yourself a little note like this. What you got going on, like I've got a 50 going to a 5 to a 1 micron absolute, 0.35. The other one on the end here is a 1 micron. And, you know, when you changed your KDF, for me, it was 2018 for the carbon, and I added some KDF in there. Uh, but anyways, for these UV Maxes, you have to change those every year. You can't get away with those. They start beeping on you if you don't for about 100 bucks. These guys, like I said, this is designed to pull these two out, hose them off, throw them back in, and just leave these guys running. So hopefully these other three, I'm just going to run them until these guys get rotten and nasty, and then I'll pull them all out and change them all. So the idea is the first two take the hit. So... Okay, till the next thing.
Okay, I decided to give you guys a bonus and give you a rundown of what I have going on with my reverse osmosis. Kind of going to be a little bit of a long video, but it's not worth making a whole second video. So I decided to take a minute and throw this in here. What I started out with originally was a RO PH90. This is from APEC. Um, I think I bought mine at Home Depot on sale, like, I don't know, $200 or something. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's a really good system. And the only tip I have for you guys is stay with something like this, where they have the screw-on standardized filters so that we can do whatever you want to with that. That's what I was looking for because I tinkered with mine because I already have the whole house filter. So basically the first two filters are just to catch the, the junk. The first has a 5 micron or something like that. And then the next one is a like a 5 micron carbon filter or something. So basically what I did is my very first filter was, I don't even use their sediment filter. Jeez, maybe I can turn on my light here. Okay, I don't even use their sediment filter. I just use their coarse carbon filter. And then that's my stage one is the carbon filter. Oh, yeah, sorry, jeez, get myself mixed up. Carbon filter. Then after that, I use the Dalton ceramic filter. These are pretty cool because you can grab like a, a kitchen scratcher, get a brand new one, don't use a dirty one. And you can actually scrub the ceramic and uh, reinvigorate the filter when it clogs up but this catches the very 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 fine stuff it's actually kind of interesting to read about Dalton he was kind of a, a cool guy so uh, that's the one I went with that's my second filter and then after that you can go with either one of these um, I think the one that was the 0.5 here from Pentec was the better of the two so I have a 0.5 carbon block filter and basically you want to use at least a good carbon filter before you go to your RO membrane because basically they burn with chlorine so it'll destroy your RO membrane. And the best one you can get for residential is the Film Tech, the 75. It's made by Dow. It's a very, very tight filter. Catches 98% of the junk. Nothing beats this. Commercial filters are, I shouldn't say nothing, but nothing you're going to get for 23 bucks from Amazon. It says, right... Where is it here? Right here. 98% rejection rate. So it gets rid of 98% of the junk that goes through this. It pitches out. Bare minimum is 96. When people buy bottled water at the store, you think you're getting good stuff. You look at the back. It says RO processed. Most of them are using commercial ones that they're barely even into the 80 percentile. So, I mean, this system will kick the, the snot out of anything you can buy in the store. Processed from city water, which is getting to be more and more. So, buy whatever you want. My only advice is get these filters with the removable screw so you can kind of tinker with the first three. And uh, the only other mods I made, um, when I got mine, I had that cheap plasticky thing. So I got a stainless upgrade. It's much, much nicer. It's actually a pretty good one standard now. And I have two tanks with a T-valve in it. They say four gallons. You're lucky if you get two of these things. You could fill up a five-gallon standard water bottle. So they probably only have about two and a half, maybe three gallons. They're not four. So, bear that in mind. I'll even give you a quick look at what I've got going on here. And this is a quarter inch flow rate. And you get plenty, plenty of water coming out of this thing. Sorry about the mess in the faucet here, but... So that's quarter inch line. And... That's what I'm talking about. You put a T in there, and you run that line over there where there's basically two tanks. Um, I use the John Gusset. I put a shutoff valve in here so I can close water the whole thing. And another cool thing is this line comes straight off of the tanks where the RO is before it goes into the polishing filter and the taste filter and the remineralization. Is this is straight RO water. I use this. You can wash your car. You throw it in a pressure washer. You don't have any spots on your car. So that's pretty cool. Okay, next thing is, I promised you guys a look at the toilet so you can see what piece of a crap the Pelican softener is. So stay tuned for that. Well, I promised you guys a peek at the hard water stains. This is in the tub, which is really in a guest bathroom. It's rarely ever even used. And you get the calcium here. I'm actually kind of afraid to use this. It's so nice, but... <laughs> We don't, we don't uh, trust the calcium just not to destroy all the marble on the sides. So this 
is what it does to the toilet. And there is no cleaning that. So this is with our fancy Pelican water softener, which it does not work. Uh, we're gonna have to just get some wet dry sandpaper or something and try and scratch this out. It's about the only hope. It's pretty much consider the toilet a lost cause. I've tried every chemical, vinegar, soda, I mean, everything shy of hydrochloric acid or something here, which is just too damn dangerous to put down the toilet. I won't do it. And that thing will not come clean. So think about that when you're buying your Pelican water softener. It, uh, it does not work for this kind of stuff. It's supposed to say easy wipe off, right? Yeah, I don't think so. So here's the finished result. Uh, filters are nice and bright, new, white, gleaning and um, maybe if you guys want I can do a review on this a couple months show you how it's all progressing this is where it was all black with all the fines coming out of the uh, the uh, carbon basically and uh, just to maybe show you guys the the uh, time that I'm doing this okay Google what is today's date it is Thursday the 17th of January 2019 so there you go that's the date if anybody wants to see a review in a couple months to see how nasty this gets or how the filters fill up you know throw something down in the comments and uh, we'll see where it goes okay been a while since I've seen you I don't know how long this is gonna wind up being but it was like one more thing and one more thing and one more thing and whatever that's how this stuff goes so I'm gonna try and cut it down I don't have a whole lot of editing software and we can chop out some of this stuff I don't know anyways you want to see what it does at the very end so um, basically I've got some water samples I'm gonna take most of them right in front of you the only one that wasn't was the starting point because our basic city water I've got to go out to the sprinklers I'm not taking you guys along for that part so all right I'm just gonna roll this I'm not gonna cut it I'm not gonna do anything on this scene so basically this these are two APEC uh, sent them to me as part of the promo when I bought that that unit uh, that I'm going to show you later on or earlier. No, this is at the end. Okay, so anyways, um, they sent me two of these because the first one, I wasn't believing. <laughs> Neither one of us were believing the numbers that I was getting out of this unit. So this is kind of the starting point. Uh, I don't know how well this is showing up here, but uh, I should do this. It's about a hundred and... They're showing about 184, 185, right around that area. This is our starting city water, and they pipe water to us from different wells, so it kind of changes around a little bit. Some days it's, when I tested it's like 300. Other days, like this one's a pretty good one. It's about 180. Uh, 150 is about the best we ever see. So anyways, that was regular city water. Now, the next one up here, it's going to be just regular old cold water out of the faucet. So I'm keeping this running. I apologize if it's boring. I think you can see me here, right? Yep. Okay. So this is just regular old cold water faucet. Now we're down to 57, 56, 52, 51, 53, right around that neighborhood. Hopefully this comes through clearly. So that's where it, that water is. And that's what you'd be drinking if you just wanted to drink the tap water. The next is through the reverse osmosis system. I showed you guys earlier. You always let it run for just a little bit kind of clears it out and then I even kind of swish it around to make sure nobody's thinking I'm playing any games or anything here. Okay. Now these are where it gets kind of crazy. I wasn't believing these readings. Um, but both pins are both reading six <laughs> six parts per million on the drinking water 
And here's the funny thing is that um, that's pretty good, even if it was just right out of the RO for most people. But this is actually after it goes through the pH and the remineralization filters, and it still stays. Man, these things turn off fast, though. It still stays in that range. Now they're about 5, 6, somewhere around there. So hopefully those are coming through. I'll pause for a second here. So it kind of varies on the water that's going in. We have 300 ppm water. And it's more like 10 or 15 or something. So that's basically what we drink out of the RO system. And I kind of modified that to make it a little bit cleaner. So you guys might want to check with that. And another tip is if you have an RO system, you know, every time it replenishes just a little bit out of a glass, you wind across, there's, there's a phenomenon known as like equilibrium in the filter where things kind of equalize and then when you turn it on, you get a bunch of junk that goes through. So if you really, really want clean water, do it in a batch. Turn off your water, run the thing until it's empty, turn it back on and let it refill the whole tank in one cycle. That's going to be the cleanest water you could probably get. So now is the weird part. This is the RO. This is basically what I put the extra tap on that I use to go wash a car and so we don't have water spots. Hopefully this comes through. I'm just going to put it on the ground and shoot water right into it. It reads one, one part per million. And it, I'm not joking, I'm not pulling any tricks. It is seriously, it comes out that clean. So we went from 200, I'll restart them again, from 200 down to one. I don't think it gets any cleaner than that. This is not good to drink. So, I mean, I'd never drink this. And basically, here's just, the swishing around water so we're back up to three this is what I've been using the whole time was the reverse osmosis water to clean it off in between each reading oh geez my finger was in there so anyways this is about a three now it started off with the same water I was basically right out of the tank so this is water that comes right out of the tank off of the um, off of the membrane basically before it gets into the polishing filter or the pH balancing filter or the remineralization filter that all make it better for uh, consumption. This is what you wash your car with or your windows with. So that's why I put that extra tap on there and it is really good. My car, I don't even bother drying it. I just hose it down with the pressure washer, drive around the block. That's it. Done deal. So anyways, I hope this learns. I'm going to put this at the very, very end of the video. So Thumbs up, guys. Hope somebody learned something. If you have anybody that you're suspicious of your water, you know, pick and choose what you want to do from what I've showed you, but it makes some damn clean water. And the funny thing is, I'm not a water professional, but don't let them talk you into a bunch of crap. Those guys are snake oil salesmen. They're dirty, filthy liars. Don't listen to them. Do your own research. Thanks. Good luck. God bless, guys.